Hello everyone, I have here all or I believe it's all of my firefighting equipment, my vehicles and craft that I have custom designed and built for my Lego city. I don't think I've ever brought all of them together into one video, including land vehicles, my one boat and even my fire train, plus a couple of little funny things on the side. I want to be very clear from the outset that I am not a firefighting super fan. There are a lot of folks out there in the Lego custom building community who are absolutely amazing at building firefighting related stuff, even doing things that are absolutely measured perfect in, you know, in reproductions and recreations of things that exist in real life. And they know all the terminology, they know what each individual small piece of equipment is used for. I don't know any of that. I'm I'm just a fan of Lego who has a Lego city and I felt that I needed some fire related stuff in my Lego city. So I built some and some of it is inspired by stuff that I've seen in real life and some of it's completely made up. So this is my basic engine here and I went with a mostly American style for most of the equipment, most of the equipment, and the black and red color scheme I chose just to get away from the all red or red and white uh, schemes that are that are most common, you know, just to be a little bit different from the most common things that I usually see. But in fact, there are a lot of fire departments in the United States that use a red and black or black and red color scheme for their apparatus. So it's it's still well within the realm of reasonability and uh, the ability to be connected to, to real life. The cab is pretty simple. The the two seating positions in there are just centered, one facing towards the front, one facing towards the rear. I only go up to six studs wide for my trucks in my city. Just That's just the scale that I personally chose that I'm happy with. And I don't know what I was doing at the back here, and I wanted to have access for somebody to climb up, but that's not the best design there. You'll find that all of these things I can tell you, being the person who, who created these things, all of these things I'm going to show you in this video were done to have stuff that I liked to look at, that I enjoyed building, and that I liked to look at and wanted to actually have on display. That's that's really all it is. So accuracy is really not there, and uh, it was it was just for fun, and I'm I'm actually happy with most of the stuff even to this day, even though some of these things are getting a little old now. This I choose to refer to as a brush truck with the four stud wide main cab section and then the six stud wide area at the back. It actually doesn't open up or anything. The monitor is able to turn up and down. It's not even on a, a turntable to be able to spin around. That's that's really just because I didn't want it to, to turn around on its, on its own because it's just going to be on display. It's easy enough to swap that out if I wanted to, but I do have an actual hose reel there, so that's good. Uh, if I redid this today, I'm sure I would be able to get more detail into this exact same amount of space, you know, without making it any bigger. That's one of the things that, well, another of the things that's really important to me personally is not wasting space, not taking up a lot of space, because although I have a tremendous amount of space for a Lego city, it's still not nearly enough for all the stuff that I want to put in there. So I need to keep things nice and small and tidy. That said, here's my biggest piece of equipment, the turntable ladder setup with a little bit of a extended nose there. It's just inspired by some of the, the newer Pierce pieces, the Pierce cabs. I think they have the, the engine forward a little bit or maybe one of the pumps is forward. I, again, I don't know the actual designs of these things internally, but that's where I got the, the idea there. And is it the most beautiful looking thing? Absolutely not. If I did this again, I would change some things, but not too much. I don't want all of my stuff to look absolutely realistic. It's not supposed to be a, a uh, you know, direct replica of present day real life. It's supposed to be a little bit of escape from reality with inspiration from reality and things that I've, I've seen. So this one I'm actually pretty happy with its overall proportions. It's mostly built around the latter section here, this this preformed large piece, which has the smaller bits within it that can be extended out. This is able to rotate around and all of these individual ladders can be extended out quite a bit, a telescope. 
So this will actually do its trick. And if I ever want to have a large building fire set up, you know, as just a little temporary scene, little diorama, miniature diorama, I can set that up with this. The outriggers also are able to come down. Uh, got, you'll, you'll see dust and, and stuff all over these because most of them have been exposed to the elements for a while. And it is now time for me to follow up and actually do some more cleaning. But this is just the state of things as they are. Yeah, I like this from most angles. I think that the cab section, though, does need a little bit more red on it, just to be a little bit more consistent overall. This is my hazmat response truck. So I did go with a different color for it intentionally. I wanted it to stand out. It's a very basic design for the cab there. Rather outdated. This is one of my older ones of the ones that you'll see here. I don't know if it's the oldest, but I am actually happy with how this turned out to this day. I would like to have a little bit more detail on the outside. The interior is also not detailed up uh, with the exception of just, I think, a seat in the, the rear section of it. But the big deal here, <laughs> such as it is, it's really not a big deal, but uh, this opens up on the top. And I don't know if there's any connection to reality here whatsoever, but I just wanted to do this. Oops, I got one of these things stuck there. Not the best design. I could change that, change those out these days. Some of these, well, a lot of these things were limited by the parts that I had on hand rather than waiting for brick linking. But this opens up, and then I've got this stock that is able to come up like so. That's on a small turntable. And I would assume that this would have some sort of sensors in it, some spectrographic cameras, some imaging stuff to look for signs of different chemicals in the air and also searching for heat, but mostly for, for chemicals is what it would be doing, doing scans. Uh, again, total pseudoscience, making things up, but I wanted to have something that came up and did like this. So I made a, you know, almost a little bit of inspiration from Lego Classic Space, where a lot of things didn't make sense, but they were cool nonetheless to kids and I guess to the designers themselves. And uh, yeah, so I appreciate it, so that's all that matters. Here's another small vehicle, and this one definitely is not a good design. Uh, I don't think those front tires even are able to rotate, maybe just barely, but they're in contact, so that's just not good. And that gap there is definitely not good. This one definitely could use a redesign, but at least from, from a little bit of a distance, it doesn't look so bad, and it you know it takes up some space in a good way. I put more of the effort in designing this into the interior than on the others because this actually does have an interior in the back here oh this is supposed to be a fire investigators van so the folks that go out to to do some forensic work and to try to figure out the exact source and cause of a fire so there's a forensic kit here for taking some samples and doing some research as well and then inside you'll see some additional things so there's a, a tool chest over there that can be taken out saw back there a couple of of uh cones you know traffic cones just to put out if they need to you know create a little extra zone of safety where they park and that's just that you know so just some some little stuff which i think would make sense like if this was done again better but as a set you know it, it would offer some some things for kids to play with again in the cab, just a single seat is all that's there, and unfortunately it is centered, and this definitely could have at least an offset uh, seating arrangement. But it's it's not bad as viewed from from the outside. You know, it has, uh, I don't know, I, I guess it just, it does what it needs to do, but it, it needs to be fixed up at some point in the future to be better. This is one of my joke apparatus pieces. This is the fire bicycle which just barely holds itself together. This is make, basically making fun of Lego's fire uh, motorcycles. Uh, there are in real life fire motorcycles, but uh, it's just kind of taking the idea further. I think that some of the, some of the uses that, that Lego tries to suggest for fire motorcycles is, something, is sometimes a little, bit, a little bit out there, but you know, I just wanted to do something that was even going even farther and i think there actually were some fire motorcycles around the turn of the 20th century or maybe a little bit before excuse me not motorcycles but bicycles actual fire bicycles 
fire department bicycles. You know, when powered vehicles weren't that common and, you know, there were horse-drawn things, maybe motor vehicles were just starting up. But yeah, I think this might not be as far away from, from uh, the realm of reasonability and reality as I was going for. My fire boat is something that I'm definitely happy with to this day because I think it looks good. Wherever, wherever I put it, in the, the watered areas around my city. And you know, I've changed the positions of bodies of water over time. And no matter where I put it, I feel like it just adds to that space. Just makes it more legitimate. I think this may have been my first time using windshields upside down in a custom build. I think it, I think it was. And this fits together pretty nicely with minimal gaps. I used one pair of very very old doors to be able to fit them into this space again wanting to keep everything nice and and compact as much as possible and I like Lego's preformed hulls even though they are preformed pieces I really like them I've collected a lot of them and I want to use a lot of them and here's one of them in use now I think for much better purpose than the original design you can look up 6005 6005 to see what this actually came from, that hull. Yeah, I'm just happy with this. It just yeah, makes me feel good about wherever I, wherever I put it. There's a little bit of detail inside the, the cabin area of it just for controls. You got the monitors that are able to rotate around. Got some valves and yeah, some antennas up there. That's just that. There's not a whole lot to it. Uh, it's a little bit heavy. I don't know if it'll actually float properly now. It may be a little bit top heavy. Uh, it should be able to float, but I don't, I don't know if, it'll, if it will capsize automatically. So it may actually need a weight on the, the base of it to get it to float. But fortunately, all of my water in my city is just plastic and plates at that. So this works. My other piece of fire department watercraft here is another joke. The fire submarine. One man fire submarine. So... I mean, I've got a lot of underwater area. I've actually expanded my underwater areas over time. And this is intended to deal with fires underwater. Because, I mean, there can be fires everywhere. There can be fires in space. There can be fires in mines. There can be fires in rural areas. There can be fires on mountains. There can be fires underwater, right? So this is to deal with fires underwater. Now, you can definitely go through some mental exercises to come up with ways to explain how this could be realistic. This could be something that would be used, that would actually be necessary and have value in, in real life. And I think that such exercises would be completely silly and thus highly recommended because they would be right in line with the vein of this. It's intended to be maximally silly. So if you want to take it seriously, I find that to be silly and great. If you don't want to take it seriously and you just think that this is a stupid idea, perfect. You are absolutely correct. And uh, it even has the fire extinguisher in there and the person is in a wetsuit. So if they need to get out, they can. Kind of works like a fire motorcycle underwater, you know, <laughs> same, same similar type of thing. There you go, my fire submarine. Maybe someday I'll make a, a bigger one with uh, accommodations for multiple crew members. My single largest piece of fire equipment is this fire train unit with two cars that are always coupled together because power actually flows between the two. And this is inspired by and loosely based upon something real. I don't recall which countries they are now. I think it's two Norwegian countries jointly operate some vehicles like this for attacking fires that may be started in very, very long tunnels that go through long mountain ranges. And especially this section here is inspired by some of that. I think, I think Siemens was one of the the builders for that for that car if I recall correctly but it, the thing itself I think is is self-powered here this is not self-powered because I've used the low boy style of flatbed base and just have the, the small 
closely mounted axles, so there's no room to place power there. This is just intended to be a big, a big, well, a big tank, a big tank of water. And that's just it. And you got a monitor over here. And I guess the thing in the back is intended to be a power generator unit and a pump. So you'd be able to also hook up back there. But in reality, this is the battery box. I wanted to use the V red battery box uses AAA batteries that Lego made. And then I've just got the, the wire that goes through here, comes up to the front and then goes through again and then it comes up to here. Now the cab in this case has the remote control unit in it. Uh, the original power functions IR control unit, which is also a speed controller. So it's sending its power up to here. This is a power functions powered base. So this is this is the engine in this case, but the idea in universe, in my universe, would be that either of these would be able to, to power themselves. And here, this fire department has just chosen to order the two and to run them coupled together. This is intended to be just a crew cab with a, uh, a pump, uh, maybe, maybe not a pump, but just a, a remote uh, remote monitor setup for it. So these would be able to be connected to this back here, which would have the pump in it and the, the tank, obviously. And then you'd be able to fight fires from within this by just turning these, these monitors around. And presumably they'd be able to go up and down as well. But you also have hookups outside, so you'd be able to hook up uh, hoses as necessary to that. And this is detailed on the inside a bit. I have not opened this up in years, so I don't remember how, but I'm just going to pull and see what happens. Worst case scenario, I'll have to put some stuff back together. Yeah, it really wasn't designed to be taken apart, was it? Oh, well, that works well enough, but just as a few people in there right now, you could put more in there and then there's a, a rack of of axes back of the back, but not a whole lot to it. But hey, no dust inside here because this has not been opened up in quite a long time. But I mean, it's just simple. The main thing is to have a fire train. And the main reason that I did this in the first place is just that I like trains a lot. I want to have lots of model trains in my Lego city, which is dominated by the rail loops. And so doing fire stuff, why not have a fire train? Turns out something actually exists. I did a police train also. don't like that as much as this one, but this, this has some staying power for me and I like it and I'm going to keep it. I'll probably update it at some point in the future, especially this section here, but that there I think is pretty much fine as is. This funky looking, very toyish looking, awkwardly proportioned, mm, is it an engine? Is it a truck? It's kind of both. This thing was just a a building challenge. It's built strictly out of pieces from the fire mech from the Lego Movie 1. I did this back then just to see if I could make a, a fire vehicle that would look like it was supposed to be the original thing that the fire mech was based upon. And uh, I think it turned out okay. I had to use some some strange pieces, some some very sketchy building techniques, very sketchy, but this is able to hold itself together. It is fairly complete. It almost looks kind of believable, you know, in its overall shape and everything. So I felt that this was pretty much a, a success. And it, if I recall correctly, it only uses pieces from that fire mech. So yeah, I was happy with how this turned out overall, but I feel like it's not good enough to keep on display in my city. I have had it on display in my city at some points. Let's see, is this, yeah, I can't see on inside of there, but a lot of this is actually quite, uh, quite hollow in the center. You don't want to grab it from, from the sides, but I mean, it doesn't even fit the color scheme. You know, it doesn't have that red and black design. So, you know, it doesn't really doesn't feel right to me. Plus all the yellow and everything. I've just kept this together because I was happy with the project, you know, the, the challenge of building something from something else. Uh, you know, the, the original idea for the fire mech was that it was built out of 
the parts of a fire truck or, or engine, a uh, fire truck, I think, but uh, in reality, the parts that were delivered in the set were very, very, very difficult to turn into this, but I still have a thing, so wanted to show it. Maybe you'll see it driving through my city at some point in the future. I don't have any particular plans to, to take this apart and, and use its pieces. I think it's fine just staying as it is. But that's it for now. I don't think I have missed anything, but I'm going to be doing a lot more work on my city very soon as review season comes to an end for the first segment of 2019 as of the time of the recording of this video. So I'll be spending a lot more time messing with my custom stuff and uh, cleaning some old stuff up, showing you some old stuff together like this and making some new stuff. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this and hope that you'll stick around to check out more. Bye for now.